Our lives are laid out on a road of bumps, turns, struggles, and more. How do we respond? How do we endure adversity for learning and growth? I'm Aubrey Johnson, and we'll explore these questions and more on The Roads Rediscovery. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Roads Rediscovery. I'm your host, Aubrey Johnson. The Road to Rediscovery is about reflecting on life lessons to learn and grow from them, and of course, pay it forward and help lift, uplift others who are struggling through dark times. A quick reminder that you can hear this show anywhere you listen to your podcasts. If you happen to listen on Apple Podcasts, feel free to rate and leave a quick review, a short review. Uh, but otherwise, you can just shoot us an email at Podcast at gmail.com. And we'll give you a shout out in a future episode. My special guest is a master certified coach, speaker, and author with over 25 years leading and coaching others through personal development and business building. She's also a member of the Female Founder Collective, Executive Coaches of Orange County, and the International Coaching Federation. She helps her clients understand that it starts with you for building success and achieving more than you ever thought possible. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Angie Wisdom to the show. Angie, welcome to the show. It's so great to have you here. Thanks for having me, Aubrey. I'm really excited about our conversation. Oh, likewise. We're thrilled to have you here. Yeah. So if you don't mind, I'd just like to, you know, just dive into it, right? Um, and 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 these are some burning questions I I've had, and I and and I'm I feel confident that the listeners are wanting to know as well. You know, based off your expertise, you know, as we all know, most of us have our professional lives and our personal lives, right? Um, we could be riding the wave uh, of success in one of those, right, and uh, in an absolute rut in the other. Um, First question, what causes that? Is it a matter of where our motivations are or, or what are your thoughts on that? You know, that's a great question because oftentimes people do have that disconnect on, you know, one is great and the other isn't. And I always take it back to values. You know, our values are really what fills us up and we can have our values showing up in our professional life, but not in our personal life. Or they may be showing up in our personal life, but not our professional life. Right. And really, when we have that lack of motivation, that burnout, or maybe just that lost feeling where something just doesn't feel right or we're not right, mm -hmm. it's usually because the things that are most important to you, those values are not showing up. I see. Interesting. Okay. Um, so what is more value to you, or I guess more motivating to you, that's where they'll show up on the opposite Abs end, right? Absolutely. And if I can give you a quick example, you know, yeah. if you value, say, um, family time, connection, time mm -hmm. in nature, accomplishment, mm -hmm. you could be getting all of those in your personal life, but then show up to this job, you know, every day, and it's not hitting any of those values for you. You're not having the accomplishment. You're not having the connection with people, with work. So therefore, that job is void of your values. Or gotcha. the other way around, yeah, mm -hmm. where you're showing up and you're getting it all at work, but at home just isn't checking the boxes. I see. I see. So can a person have the desire to grow and improve uh, their situation? Um, let's say they have that desire to grow and improve mm -hmm. in their current situation, but they're hesitant to do the work required. And if so, how do you encourage someone to, um, quote, get off the porch, so to speak, and run? Yes. Yes. It, you can have the desire. Oftentimes people have the desire. They want something different. But once we start really looking at what that's going to take, that can be kind of scary, a little overwhelming. Yeah. Yeah. Because you, I'm sure you know that, right? And in, in kind of always talking about this rediscovery that it takes us really shining a light on the things that sometimes we don't want to see. Yes. Yes, that's true. And, and, and you know what, that kind of segues into my next question. It kind of leads into this next question. You know, we've heard of people who let's say they want to write that book, right? Uh -huh. They want to start that new business. 
or let's say even make that career change, right? Mm -hmm. But they're hesitant to start because of fear of failure. Mm -hmm. That's that's pretty obvious, right? Um, but I can't help but think that there are also those who are hesitant to start for fear of succeeding. Um, sure. Are there? You have any thoughts on that? I do. It, you know, it's it's interesting. Sometimes people think it's the fear of failure. And like you said, it's really the, the fear of succeeding. And so much of that depends on your, you know, your history, how you yeah. were raised, the experiences that you went through. Oftentimes, if people have witnessed success on a big level that also produced trauma mm -hmm. or mm. devastation, right? Mm -hmm. They they maybe saw parents or they saw other families rise to success yeah. and the money created some kind of breakage in the family system. And they often associate that, well, when I get there, this comes with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there can absolutely be that fear of success of like, well, what will happen then? You know, will I be too big? Will I not have the same values or morals or will I lose touch with who I am right now? Yeah. Yeah. That's a great point. And, 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 and that made me think of two things. Uh, number one, um, maybe I'm just guessing that someone who may be hesitant for fears of succeeding could also realize that if they do succeed, now they're held to a higher standard or, you know, it's like, okay, what's that next thing to shoot for? What's that next goal? And, mm -hmm. and then to sustain that success, right, is going to take more work. It's going to require a better version of yourself prior to you succeeding, whatever that goal is. And the second thing I thought of was, as you were mentioning this, Angie, I think of, I don't know, I can't help but think of a tremendous amount of professional athletes, um, um, musicians, mm -hmm. okay, who are just so, so um, abundantly talented, right? Tremendously talented yeah. and, and, and have achieved so much in their, in their professions, you know, and, and in some cases it doesn't come without a cost, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, there is a cost associated with that and it may be on the family side, sadly, you know, um, yeah, I mean, uh, the, uh, do you think that happens more often than not? Or what do you think? I do. I've seen that a lot. I mean, even uh -huh. in some of my clients where mm -hmm. um, money, you know, notoriety, mm -hmm. all of that starts to create, you know, problems that they did not have before. Yeah. hundred percent. And, um, you know, I think that you have to really understand what the possibilities are and yeah. have conversations and expectations around that before mm -hmm. you get there. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I also caution people to not go too far into the future. You know, you mentioned something a minute ago about how oftentimes people will have that fear because they're like, well, then what's next? And what, yeah. what do I have to reach for next? Yeah. And that's a real clear indication that we're not here in the present moment. Mm. We're always looking for that next finish line or yeah. what's going to, you know, what are we going to have to rise up to after that? Mm -hmm. We're not right here and now. Understood. That, so. That's the problem. I see. I see. Um, so it, it sounds like there we have to kind of strike a sweet balance between mm -hmm. being in the present moment. And then, of course, you know, maybe for the immediate future, you know, if there's a goal to better ourselves, um, you know, have that in mind, but not at the sacrifice of being out of the present moment. Absolutely. And I, I tell people in a sense of like, if you need to go into the future, because you're mm -hmm. talking about strategy, you're talking about forecasting, yes, yes. planning, yes. visualizing, mm -hmm. fantastic. Go there and get what you need. Right. And then let's get back here to the present moment to really 100%. do the work. 100%. Mm -hmm. Love it. Love it. So uh, I'm a big fan of mantras. Okay. And I just mm -hmm. wanted to know your thoughts. How well do mantras work in reinforcing inspiration? Oh, I love that. I did not know you were a big fan of mantras because I'm a big fan of mantras. Mm -hmm. I love that. And I believe in them and I have clients create them all the time Yeah, because 
we basically, whatever we have in our mind has been there, has mm -hmm. been constructed over past experiences and limiting beliefs. Mm -hmm. So the only way to change all that is by reprogramming, rewiring yes. with new thoughts. And that's where that mantra comes into play. So I encourage people all the time, like, what do you want to live by? You know, what is that mantra that you want to say every single day yeah. that's going to inspire you? And sometimes yes. I'll have mantras for all different areas. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's me. And, yeah. you know, at the risk at the risk of geeking out, um, I'm going <laughs> to share with you that I do have a vision board. And um, among the things on my vision board, of course, is a mantra. So, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. it's phenomenal. I mean, look, our our brain is constantly thinking things all the time. It's throwing thoughts at us. You mm -hmm. know, I don't know what the stats are, how many per second It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. If we don't have these mantras like in our pocket, ready to go to fire back. Yes. Then we lose control of our mind. We don't get yeah. to dictate what it thinks. No, absolutely. We don't, you know? Yeah. So um, I would love if you could unpack for the listeners what you have as the three keys to energy and motivation. I am a firm believer that we are, uh, you know, what we produce, our output is a direct correlation of our input. Yes. So we, in order to you know, perform to our fullest in order to get the results that we want in order to really tap into our gifts. It's all dependent on what's coming in to what's mm -hmm. going out. So mm -hmm. I look at three different things. First of all, I say, are those values showing up, which we mentioned in the beginning a little bit. Right. If I run on spirituality and alone time and time in nature and family time and accomplishment, I have got to make sure all those things are coming into my life every single day. Yes. That's, that's charging my battery right there. Yes. The second part of it is I have to be present enough to enjoy them. Mm -hmm. I can't just be checking the boxes on those things because mm -hmm. then it's like I'm not even getting the real value from oh, yeah. having those so values true. show up. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, so <laughs> true, so true. And 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 um, when explaining that to your clients is is yes. uh, is, is there is there any I don't know. I'm not a fan of the term aha moment, but epiphany yes. or the light bulb comes on when we yes. explain that. I mean, it, I, 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 I'm going to write that down and put that in the episode show notes, what you just said. And if you could just <laughs> share that again about getting the value, right? Yes. If you're not in the present moment and you're just checking the boxes, you're not getting the value of, of that activity of what you're doing. It's, it's so true. And oftentimes people think they don't like something mm -hmm. because they've done it, but they weren't present for it. So therefore right. they didn't get the value, right? Like, oh, yeah. well, I really hate going to the gym. Are yeah. you present? Are you like engaging in what you're doing? Do you have some intention there? Yeah. Because it's a different experience mm -hmm. than if you're going, I have to do this, check the box and just go through the motions. So do you think that when people say, they're just going through the motions or mm -hmm. they went to the gym and everything was a blur. Um, yes. is, 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 is that comment like a result of not being in the moment at the time they were at the gym in this example? Yes, exactly. You nailed it. You know, I'll often ask clients mm -hmm. about a particular situation and I'll say, mm -hmm. what was it like? Mm -hmm. Describe it to me. Yes. And if, yes. if somebody was watching the sunset and they said, oh my gosh, the air was so crisp and I could hear the waves and the birds flew by and the colors were so bright. They were present. Somebody yes. else says, oh, it was really pretty. It was really pretty outside. <laughs> so th their senses weren't engaged. Right, right. So yeah. And, and I guess- people engage their senses, like look yes. at things deeply, hear yes. them, yes. you know, feel them, smell mm -hmm. them. That brings you to the present moment. Those are all actions that are bringing to the present moment. I mm -hmm. see, and mm -hmm. and you know, um, uh, I don't know. Maybe the difference between a good storyteller and a bad storyteller is how present were they in the moment in the story that they're sharing. You know, if it's their own story, I guess. <laughs> Absolutely, that's a really great point. Very, yeah. very true. Yes. And 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 whether or not we're engaged in hearing that story can kind of be an indicator of how present they were when it was happening. Just right. 
so true. It's oh, from sweet. every angle there, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, from multiple angles, no doubt. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So Angie, I want to I want to switch and kind of pivot, talk a little bit mm -hmm. about mindset, okay? Mm -hmm. Um can you start us off by just giving us a glimpse into the morning mindset journal? Absolutely. I created this morning mindset journal because basically after 20 years of working with people, it's about five years old, the journal, after 20 years of working with people, I learned that we have the same problems, yeah. no matter whether you're, you know, a stay at home mom or you're mm -hmm. a billion dollar CEO, mm -hmm. the same problems occur just on different levels. So I created this morning mindset journal with basically reverse engineering all these challenges that come up for people yeah. so that we could proactively create self-awareness, ah, okay. set intentions. Yes. So we're basically going, this is what's going to trip me up. So therefore mm -hmm. we're going to tune into it every single morning. And that's oh. how it got created. And um, it gives people a few things. One, a very proactive start to their day. Mm -hmm. If you don't, you know, say grab the bull by its horns, right, and start right. your day on your terms, right, you end up kind of getting whipsawed, right? You'll finish yeah. that day going, "What just happened?" You know, yeah. I was on the defense all day. I was reactive, right. So starting out gives you that proactive start, and then you get to create a relationship with yourself. Nice, nice. Who who leads you better than you? That's right. Right. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And 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 that's a great start because from there there could be a manifestation of how you interact with people outside your world, right? Sure. Mhm. Mm yeah. 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 It, it's a phenomenal process. I mean, I uh, have groups that I work with and and a couple of the ladies said today, I just started that morning mindset journal mm -hmm. and it's so simple but I can't tell you how much better my day felt. I felt organized, I felt yeah. peaceful. I yeah. felt like I got the things that were important to me in. Yeah. So just set your day up differently. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that example that that, mm -hmm. that a client has given you because I, I think that 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 pretty much answers my next question, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is, you know, I would think while mastering mindset may not necessarily change the circumstances of one situation, um, does it offer a change in one's perspective? It sounds like it it offers a change in one's perspective, which could eventually lead to taking action to change the circumstances. Yes, absolutely. And there's a, a section in the Morning Mindset Journal, um, okay. a few, one that is gratitude. Mm -hmm. Gratitude is the biggest perspective changer. Mm -hmm. There is not a better per perspective changer than gratitude. We think of gratitude in terms of, Oh, just being grateful for the things that we have and yeah. that are like, of course, no brainers to be grateful for. Right, but right. when you find gratitude for the things that seem unfortunate for you, mm -hmm. you change your perspective. Mm, I see. I see. Yeah, you do change your perspective. So in a way, yeah. it's like we're not talking about, you know, you got a flat tire or something. And right. most people would be like, oh, this is horrible. Well, if you find some gratitude for it. And you see what is the bright side of this? Hey, mm -hmm. I just got 20 more minutes of downtime. Yeah. You know, you yeah. find that gratitude, you start shifting your mindset and your mind can't help but find those opportunities going forward because you're training your mind to like, yes. we don't know whether something is a blessing or a curse. Right. right? We can't tell the future. Right. We cannot. So, yeah. you know, find gratitude in it for what it is. And then you're going to see the opportunity that has. Mm, love it. Thank you so much for sharing that insight, Angie. Really, really mm -hmm. appreciate it because I want the, I want this to be, I, I want us to emphasize this to the listeners and I want the listeners to fully understand that mastering mindset can offer a fresh and new perspective that can empower you to turn things around with any unfortunate circumstance, any setback, any adverse uh, ad, um, adversity, any challenge or obstacle, right? Mm -hmm. um, now, you know, it, it's at the same time being real about it and not just, sure. you know, everything's cake and sunshine, but look for those opportunities, train your mind to look for those opportunities where, you know, hey, there could be a blessing behind this. Here's something that I can take advantage of, even though this is a setback. And uh, and 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 you know that should empower you to to um, 
to to turn things around, you know, or at least take corrective action uh, to resolve the issue, whatever it may be. Yeah, it takes you out of that victim mentality. Yes. You have, a, you have the way to look at it differently. And I don't know if you've seen the movie Mission Joy. No, it's a I have great haven't. movie. I feel like it's a hidden secret. I just saw it the other day. Really? And Dalai Lama is in it. And okay. he said the funniest thing. He said, well, if you look at something and it doesn't look good from that mm. angle, then get up and move and look at it from a different angle. Okay. And that's what we're talking about. Perspective, right? Mm, you just yes, change your perspective. Right. Look at it from a different angle. Yeah. And it'll yeah. probably look better from a different direction. You know? <laughs> no, absolutely. A hundred percent. I totally, totally agree. And mm -hmm. and what's the name of it again? It's called um, Mission Joy. Mission Joy. Mission yeah. Joy. Okay. It's a fascinating little documentary. Okay. Yeah. I might have to look that up on Netflix or somewhere for sure. It is on Netflix. Yes. It is. It's all about the mindset, the power of the mind to see mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. as you direct it to see them and, and not just being a victim of your circumstances or environment. It allows you to take ownership and take charge. It sounds like. Mm -hmm. Yes. Beautiful. Beautiful. You know, Angie, you have an article in your blog that I found very interesting, and I wanted mm. to just maybe chat with you about it. Um, it it's it's some. I guess this this article is about what drives the decisions that we make. Mm. Um, mm. You talk about how our values are at the heart of who we define ourselves to be. Mm -hmm. and how we express our values in the choices that we make every day. In my mind, when I read that, I thought, that uh. is huge. Mm -hmm. It's huge. And it sounds like it takes a tremendous amount of self-awareness and reflection to uh, and transparency yeah. to look back at the decisions you've made to try to assess what values you have you know, mm -hmm. at, at your core. And so it, it leads me to ask you, I mean, it had me thinking, you know, yeah, it really did. But, it, but it, but it leads me to ask, can someone improve their situation, circumstances, or who they are to obtain a value that's not originally at their core? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. it, people can change all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I believe that, you know, we, those are choices that we get to make. Yes. Yes. And, and we can, you know, modify those and change them with work as long as like what you said, it starts with self-awareness. So we yes. have to have a tremendous amount of self-awareness mm -hmm. and then you know, the presence in that moment to do it differently. Exactly. Yeah. I, I think of recovering alcoholics um, mm -hmm. or recovering drug addicts or um, say uh, reformed uh, um former inmate in a mm -hmm. prison, you know, um, turning things around, getting a job, making a living and keeping their nose clean, you know, and, uh, and, 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 and their values change, they change, mm -hmm. you know? So, um, and, and to me, I mean, that, that's just the beauty, but it takes hard work, right? It takes a lot of work. You, mm -hmm. it, I won't sugarcoat it. Right. I, I just won't, you know, it does yeah. take work, but it is probably the most rewarding work you will ever, ever do. Couldn't agree more. Couldn't mm -hmm. agree more. Life yes. changing, life changing, right. life impacting. Oh yeah. Total transformation, mm -hmm. but, but it takes time. <laughs> it does. <And> work. <laughs> so patience, self-awareness, yeah. patience, mm -hmm. some work, but you can start small, you know, even yeah. with what you're talking about there with values and decisions, Mm -hmm. If you know what your values are and then you start like almost pausing to yeah. put those values next to your choice. Yeah. Yeah. It starts happening. We don't typically uh -huh. make value aligned decisions because we don't know our values. I see. That's really what happens. We make mm -hmm. them on our feelings, like in the moment, yeah. how are we feeling? We think that's yeah. how we should make the decision. Oh, we're hungry. Mm -hmm. So we eat. Oh, we're tired, yeah. so we go to bed. Yeah, we we put some of those same things in big decisions that shouldn't belong there, right? Or or we're angry, so we shop. No. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I'm not saying that's what I do. No. I was going to say, are you speaking from personal experience? <laughs> like here? an emotional purchase, like right? <laughs> uh, well, I do want a new truck, but I won't get buy one 
from being angry. I mean, I, <laughs> yeah, but it's that shiny object syndrome, right? Yeah, <laughs> for, for some of us, right? Myself yes. included with trucks. <laughs> we know, we know what, uh, what you like now. <laughs> yeah, we certainly do. We certainly do. So Angie, how can the listeners follow you and maybe get a morning mindset journal and learn more about the great work that you're doing? My name is easy to find. Uh, there's not a lot of wisdoms out there. So Angie Wisdom, I am on uh, Instagram at Angie Wisdom Life Coach. That's where I'm on Facebook and LinkedIn and YouTube as well. Mm -hmm. I really try to put a tremendous amount of just free content and videos and opportunities out there. Yeah, so you can follow yeah. any of those Angie Wisdom Life Coach. My website is AngieWisdom.com. The journal is for sale on the website. Nice. And um, I think... I know that it's coming up, but we're doing a morning mindset challenge. So that's a great way oh, nice. to get your journal, tune in, do mm -hmm. it. I think it's a 21 day challenge that's coming up in March or so, but mm. lots of opportunities to connect. Beautiful. Fantastic. We're going to make sure to include all of those links and information in the episode show notes. So the listeners can click on those links, pick up a copy purchase a copy of that morning mindset journal and um, learn more about the great work that Angie wisdom is doing while listening to this beautiful conversation. Angie, okay. thank you so much for coming on the show. I, I can't thank you enough for just giving us some insights, um, you know, on, on your expertise uh, on motivation. Thank you. Thanks for sharing your space with me, Aubrey. I appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. And I want to thank all of you for tuning in and listening and look, if you have a loved one, a colleague, a neighbor, friend, coworker who um, just doesn't seem to be themselves, um, they are just uh, going through dark days of despair, not quite, not quite sure or aware of, um, you know, where they're going. I humbly ask that you please share this, this show with them, because on the road to rediscovery, there are two things we want our listeners to know. Number one, there's always hope. And number two, you're not the only one. You're not alone. The road to rediscovery is a movement, a revolution. And guess what? You are now part of it. We're all roadies on this journey of life. And it sure feels good having you on the road with me. Thanks again for listening. We'll chat again soon. We really hope you enjoyed this episode of The Road to Rediscovery. We'd love to hear from you. Shoot us an email at roadsrediscoverypodcast at gmail.com and leave us any questions or comments you may have. The Roads Rediscovery is an AJ Shark production.